Hey everybody, Crypto Mentor 99 and you will not believe who I have to interview this morning. It is the man, the myth, the crypto or the Digibyte legend. It's Hans, the chairman of the Digibyte Foundation. Hans, good to see you. Absolutely, likewise, uh, John, Crypto Mentor 99. Absolutely my pleasure and wow, is that an introduction or what? <laughs> Awkward. I, I need to send a copy to my mom. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of things that we want to get to with this interview. But one of the things, I'll just lay out for the listeners what, what we're going to be going over. Um, sure. Big news announcement. The Digibyte Foundation has partnered with Change Angel. Full disclosure, I've got my Change Angel t-shirt on. Then we're going to pick Han's brain a little bit. Uh, later in the interview, how we got interested in cryptos, and then we're going to flip-flop over to how we got interested in Digibyte. And then at the end, not that it's the least important, but I want to talk about Hans's passion for and with the Digibyte, Digibyte Foundation, kind of the purpose of it, the function, how it was formed, and how people can get on board. So Hans, let's start with kind of the big news, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm looking at a tweet here from July 31st. It says, thanks, and this is from the Digibyte Foundation. It says, thanks Change Angel for creating the landing page for the Digibyte Foundation website. And you guys got, there's a partnership that's fairly new. So let's kind of dive into that a little bit. Talk about Change Angel and the relationship with uh, the Digibyte Foundation, please. Absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, John, Crypto Mentor 99, thanks for having us. Yes, and sir. And I always talk in the plural. That's not because I feel myself majestic or regal. <laughs> it is just that I speak on behalf of the community. You might see my face, but when you see me, think of the Digibyte community. And we're a wild bunch all over the world, <laughs> from all corners of the world from all walks of life. So that's why we always talk in the plural. Yes, so sir. it's not about having pretenses or whatsoever. So when you hear we, you hear the dish by community. That's awesome. Um, that, that said, um, I think that's a great question. Uh, absolutely, uh, John. Um, we have indeed uh, partnered and teamed up with Change Angel. And we are extremely, and I mean extremely excited about teaming up with Change Angel. And that is for a few reasons. And it, I, I find it very hard to pick the most important one, but if if you had to wake me up in the middle of the night and you would say, Hans, why change angel? I would probably say, we got kindred DNA, and yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Change angel, as well as Digibyte, we not, we're not self-serving. We're not looking only after our own interest. We are looking for the community, and we were looking for the community at large. Change angel does exactly that. Uh, yes, you can really swap easily yeah. the cryptos. Yes, it's non-custodial. Yes, it's fast. But it's also very important to know that the, the, the fees go directly into a better cause. And Digibyte is one of the causes that Change Angel has decided and opted to sponsor and to support and give back to. And I think that element is so important and that gives such a, a yeah. natural fit uh, if you like, that makes it so special. And that's why we're so excited of having that, that, that partnership. And of course, it feels like 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 a natural fit. Yeah. Uh, so when we start talking with, with Change Angel about it, you know, with, with Dean and, and, and Ben and, and Yip, it, it, mm -hmm. it was only you know, a five-second discussion, if you like, before we read about it, because we all felt that this is what we wanted. This is what we should do, and this is what we wanted to do. And it, it felt so normal. And again, because we have that, that natural fit and that thinking alike of thinking of communities and helping support uh, yeah. other communities. And that for us was the most crucial. Yeah. Part. Well, I remember that's great, Hans. I remember like in 2017 and 2018 when I got started investing in cryptocurrencies. You know, all I did was like read the white papers of different projects or go to their website. And I'm like, 
This is good, but I'm a people person. I like to, you know, see people. I like to look in their eyes. I like to talk to them. And I remember when I interviewed on two separate occasions, uh, Dean and Ben, the thought just occurred to me, these are real guys that live really far away from me, but we have a same interest and the same passion. Even you, like when we started to Skype, I'm like, I've got another yeah. friend now. I've got another friend in Amsterdam, you know, yeah. and without going too far off the um, subject here, my uh, my wife and I have been going to Guatemala for probably the last 10 years. And we basically adopted a village of, of 125 families that live on the side of a mountain, basically. And I was there in January before the pandemic hit. And, um, you know, we give out, you know, gym shoes, clothes, food, medicine, whatever. And um, Change Angel was one of the sponsors. And it was just so great to, um, as, as there's a slang in the United States, it says, you put your money where your mouth is, instead of doing a lot of talking. Yep. So, yep. and then recently, as far as sponsorships, the, their uh, Ben and Dean and the rest of the guys um, sponsored my little YouTube channel. So again, I love Change Angel. I use them. It's honest. It's sincere. And yeah. every transaction that I do, I, and I'm not special in this way. Dean calls me on the phone to make sure that my transaction went through. If I was happy, and I said to him. Yeah are you just doing this because I have a YouTube channel? He said, no, we do this. It's customer service. Yeah. It shocked me, Hans. I was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I couldn't believe yeah. it. No, I, I, I totally agree with that. You mentioned one word and that's sincere. And I think that's, that I, I quickly want to revisit that because I think that that's why you nailed it, uh, uh, John. I think the, the, the guys, we have not met in person yet, but you just know they are sincere. The, the yeah. interaction... The, the, the cloud they carry, uh, there's definitely very much uh, the sincerity uh, wafts all over it. Uh, uh, yes, the, 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 the crypto swap, it's fast. Yes, it's secure. Yes, it's non custodial. But you, know, you trust the guys and yeah. you want to be with the guys. And that, uh, and that oozes uh, out of the Yeah, uh, for sure. And that's one of the reasons, we, again, we feel that that click is, uh, is, is, is so important. And we want to be part of, yeah. of, of their community. They want to be part of our community. So, again, that's, that, that could not have been uh, a, a better fit. Yeah. So, yeah. Know, what do you mean with sincerity? Yeah. Well, it, it was kind of funny. Again, full disclosure, I did an interview about Change Angel and them sponsoring my YouTube channel, which their donation yes. went to the people in Guatemala. And, I, and on the YouTube video that I did maybe a month or five weeks ago, I said, and, and I said, I... I said uh, on my YouTube channel uh, for this um, I, about Change Angel, I said, I think they've got like 25 or 30, you know, different cryptos that you could swap. And then Ben sent me a text and said, dude, we got like 46. We've got a lot more than what you said on the video. I said, you guys are growing all the time. I apologize, you know. Yeah, correct. But I remember you know, when they, they are indeed growing, growing all the time, and and it's, it's actually also something we, as the Digibyte Foundation, are going to use because we have uh, another uh, affiliation with the company, uh, which yeah. will uh, subsidize us and sponsor us with some uh, some coins and tokens. And for us, it would be a perfect fit, you know, to swap that uh, five yeah. uh, five change angel as well. And indirectly, we're getting a kickback from it. You know, so for us, it, it's it's yes, sir. it's a win. Right, and that, that makes it so beautiful. Yeah, and for those of you that are listening that are like Change Angel, Digibyte, what's all that about? I'm going to put some links below in this, in this video. Um, and it's not that we want to gloss over the importance of the Digibyte Foundation, the Digibyte Awareness Team, which they're, they're two separate entities, and Change Angel. But if you're not familiar with those, I'll just put the uh, links below. Hans, let's switch gears a little bit. And I always love to hear people's answer to this simple question. What was your moment when you, and I say this jokingly, when you, when you got out of bed one day and said, I'm interested in cryptocurrencies and I want to start to invest. Like, how did all yeah. that come about? Yeah. 
I guess like most of us, I got into crypto via Bitcoin. I mean, that's that's sort of the, the, the genesis path <laughs> all of us or most of us uh, uh, walk uh, through. And I have been looking at the price development of, of uh, Bitcoin and then you know, I became $10 and, and you know, you just sort of, oh, it, it's, it's getting something. And it, 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 it was turning heads. People were talking about it, and that was for me also a moment. You know, having a big interest in in financial technology, having a big um, uh, interest in in technology at large, and how we can use it in day to day applications. Uh, also combined with the decentralization peer to peer aspect, I felt same as with change angle. Yeah. Change angle. I just had to be. Part of that, so I, I bought some Digibyte, uh, some sorry, some Bitcoin. I, st I started a Bitcoin. I bought some Bitcoin, and then I start to to, to learn a bit about it. You know, what, what is actually peer-to-peer -peer cashless uh, system? What is it really? I actually read uh, the white paper, um, didn't fully understand it the first time. In all honesty, so I read it a few times, but it 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 it, it slowly sinked in, and and for me. Like I've always been interested in technology, not how the bits and the bytes and, 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 and the bobs and the bytes work, but what can it do to society? What is the impact on us? Does it empower me? What's the impact in, in the financial, social, political and economical arena? Wow. And that, that definitely drew me into to Bitcoin and into cryptocurrency because for me it was like the, the, the catalyst in a way we were waiting for for financial literacy but also financial empowerment um so what so year was that hans like was that 2011 2015 20 like what what year was all this when you really started to get interested in cryptos uh, 2012 was the year i oh I, boy I, I in, involved and interest uh, in it and wow. i i still had a bit of the the Wanted to, still wanted to be a bit in the shallow end of the pool, if you like, at that point in time. Uh, and I, I, I guess that's, that's, you know, although you understand the concept and you like the concept, it's not like, oh, I'm all in, right? That's not that's not how we got into the crypto thing. So it's, it's you buy a little bit and, you know. And, and, that's funny, yeah. Just, yeah. That, it, it, it takes a little while before you feel a bit more comfortable and, and at ease because, I remember my first transaction. You know, I was I was sweating bullets. You know, yeah. I was like, what's happening? Nothing is happening. Right? It's, it's, uh, I was actually a little nervous and apprehensive. Uh, so you need to overcome that. So you know, it, I think most of us go into crypto via the Bitcoin, and we we go in via the shallow end. Not 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 a lot of us just you know jump in. Okay, I'm I'm putting all my savings. I'm putting ten thousand uh, dollars sure. straight into Bitcoin. I think most of us don't do that. Uh, I I didn't for sure. So uh, that would. Comfortable more now. Sure. So that was 2012, and then come forward in time a little bit. What what is your history been, and when did you find um, Digibyte? Well, the first time I actually uh, read and heard about this was, was late 2015. Okay. 2016, I start uh, reading about it. Um, and buying some, uh, and in uh, 2017, I actually understood what Digibyte is all about. Sure. And and I, I, I that for me was specifically a bit of you know the, the light bulb moment, if you like, that I and it's oh it is fast. Yes, it is secure. Yes, it is forward thinking. But I had experienced a few drawbacks of. Of Bitcoin and sure. this part of mitigated that of, of, of conduct and um, also I, th I think the, the the price point at that it was also easier to to okay I'm I'm buying some of that uh, and 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 you know even if you had like one Bitcoin you know it, it, it still doesn't feel like a lot is it even yeah. you know, it's like today it's like twelve thousand dollars just you know a couple of dollars short of twelve thousand it's a lot but you only have one Bitcoin. Uh, and yet you can still say, you know, I'm going to buy 10,000 and buy 100,000 Digibytes. So even the psychology of it did have an impact and did, did have an, an, an influence in a way as, as someone who wanted to uh, hold um, uh, some coins on, on Digibyte. Uh, but that said, 2017 was for me the light bulb moment that I, wow. I understood what it was all about. And it was not, not only because it was fast, it was secure and forward thinking, but 
the community. That, that triggered me, that uh, decentralization and community thinking, yeah. uh, empowerment, inclusiveness, you know, core principles of decentralization were lived and breathed, that, and that oozed yeah. for me out of this part. And that's, that's when I thought, okay, this is, this is something uh, really special and I, I, I want to have some. Um, it actually took a while before I, after that, became actively involved in DigiBuy because at that point in time I was still, I wouldn't say shy, but I, I was still, um, you know, shy is not something that, that's not my middle name, on the, on the contrary. Uh, I can jump into anything, but I always felt like, okay, this is, you know, an, uh, a special, unique, highly skilled, intelligent uh, a team of people, and I just feel like, you know, like a hillbilly on, 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 on clocks walking in there in that community. Mm -hmm. um, nothing is farther from the truth, absolutely. Nothing is further from the truth. On the contrary, all walks of life, all people are welcome. Yeah. And once, once I understood that, and... You know, that is so in line with what, what decentralization is, John. You know, it yeah. is inclusive. And you know, we do want people uh, involved uh, and included and inclusive in the community. But when I actually saw that, you know, then for me it was, okay, now there's no nothing stopping me. And then yeah. uh, I, uh, I met with Rudy, uh, Rudy Bauman, yeah. uh, one of the, the who, who hasn't heard of him. Uh, I... Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, able to meet uh, uh, Jared Tate on a few occasions uh, uh, in America. I spent a bit of time chatting with him, and you know, I, I actually remember meeting Jared. That I, I, I was a bit uh, timid almost, but yeah, he's such a normal guy. I mean, he's the he's the the most normal, most approachable, yeah. the sweetest guy uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've ever met. You know, which makes just another thing is like, you know, we don't have a single point of failure within the community, not person-wise, not technology-wise, and, and Jared understands that, and he represents that, actually, so he was very much approachable, you know, nice guy to have a drink with and nice chat with, not only about digital blockchain, but also about lots of other stuff, sure. just a very engaging, warm, warm person, so that, you know, that nailed it. <laughs> wow. Let me go back a little bit. Again, I'm not asking you... No what exchanges you bought Digibyte on, but since you're in the Netherlands, which is far away from where I'm at in the United States, in 2015, did you only have, and again, I'm not asking you to name the exchange that you bought on for privacy reasons, obviously, but yeah. was it, yeah. in 2015, was there only, in your part of the world, was there only one or two exchanges? Were there a lot of exchanges that you could have bought on? Well, with the internet, the world is at your fingertips. So for us, uh, barriers weren't necessarily okay. uh, there. And um, there were actually also times that, that with exchanges now, with KYC procedures, you know, that wasn't always in day one. Um, so that's that's also a comment. Uh, you're right as to, to privacy. I, I do not list those those exchanges, but, but also... As a chairman of the Disbyte Foundation, if I list one foundation over another, right. people say oh, he, he makes an endorsement, and and that's something right. I, I want to stay away right. from. So even from that aspect, I do not favor one exchange from the other. I have personal preferences, but I I don't sure. uh, list. Um, uh, th that said, um, there were also uh, American exchanges um, okay. I relatively felt comfortable with. That, that you can join being in the Netherlands, you could join those, you, you could basically yes. join any exchange pretty much, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, correct. But uh, for me, so it's very important, uh, the user interface, how easy is it? Right. And, and I still today find certain exchanges not very friendly. Right. It's, I, I still sort of, you know, what am I doing here? How does this work? I mean, if, right. if you need to think about it, then, you know, that's not for me. Yeah, it's no, that's good. Understandable and needs to be reliable and fast. Um, but you know, as it comes to exchanges, I do have to mention the, the, the historic and classic words of, of Jared Tate: um, uh, "Not your keys, not your coins." Yeah, yeah. Explain that to people, even though that that's you know basic. It's like super important, Hans. So what? So would you mind taking a minute or two if someone's just watching this video? They're like, "What did that yeah, guy just I, say? What, yeah. what does that mean?" 
too, because it also comes a bit on, on an area of, of my background. And I make a little introduction, if, if you allow me, John. Sure. My, my background and my, my interest is, is governance. And, and governance is something that, for a lot of people, yeah, uh, oh, oh, that's important. <laughs> well, actually, it is. How do we structure? How do we organize? How do you want to be seen and perceived in being in, in, in functioning as an organization? Is governance? It's not. It's more than just compliance, compliance with rules and regulations. It's much, much more than that. It's adhering to principles. Like countries adhere to democratic principles. I think. We in the blockchain community should adhere to decentralization uh, uh, principles. Uh, that said, on an exchange, you upload your coins, and that means that the coins are not held by you. They're held by the exchange. You can access them, they are yours, but they're held by the exchange. Yeah. And that's a very subtle yet important difference. You do not have the private keys of your wallet to unlock the coins. So you only can withdraw your coins more or less with permission of the uh, of the exchange. That's how the principle, not your keys, not your coins, in a way, works. So someone else can access, and we've seen that unfortunately too many times. Mount Gox, for instance, is an important and famous one uh, that all of a sudden, you know, if you have the coins there, someone can hack into it, they can get your keys, and they can steal your coins. Yeah. And it's gone, pockets. Yeah. And that's why the principle of have your own wallet, secure your keys, is very important. No, that's great, Hans. Hey, let's end with this. Again, we're not in a hurry, but let's kind of end with this. Why don't you, again, in however way you, you want to answer this, because I... I'm selfish, and, and, and I want to know some of these answers myself, which is why I started the YouTube channel. So sure. let's talk about, or could you please talk about the Digibyte Foundation, kind of why it was formed, when it was formed, kind of the purpose of it, the function, yeah. and how people can either get involved, jump on board, yada, yada, yada. Well, you're saving the best question for last. Uh, I've <laughs> now, change angel was the first and first and foremost important thing. But I do love to talk about the Digibyte Foundation. Well, the Digibyte Foundation is, in a way, a very simple concept: is empower the community and decentralize the world. That is what we want to do. We find it extremely, extremely, extremely important to stick as close as humanly possible to the principles of decentralization. That means we want to be inclusive, we want to empower the community, we want to listen to the uh, community. Um, the foundation also understands, and the community understands, that as a Digibyte blockchain, we want to grow. We need liquidity, we need adaptation. In order to achieve that, we do need sometimes a vehicle that can either represent us or can fuel the, the faith and the trust uh, from others in the Digibyte blockchain. Mm. And that's precisely what the Digibyte Foundation sets out to do. Establishing trust, so as, as a company, we do not have a uh, for profit goal. Right. No, we are a foundation, so we are non for profit. That also means that Rutger, Rudy, and myself, we do not get paid. On the contrary, by law in the Netherlands, it is forbidden to pay board members in any shape or form any form of re remuneration. So really? we do not get paid. That's forbidden because you're in it because you want it. That's a, that's a pure concept of a foundation in the Netherlands. And wow. that's also one of the reasons we set up uh, in the Netherlands. Okay. But as said, the foundation mission is simple. Empower the community. Decentralize the world. And we want to promote the dish by blockchain in doing just that. And sometimes it is better that we can represent the community. And as the board, uh, we have a treasurer, a secretary, uh, and me, the chairman, but there is no hierarchy right. in those roles. It is merely a legal requirement. So if we, as, as the Digibyte Foundation, want to 
sponsor a, a project or undertake a certain activity, we can only do so and want to do only so by endorsement of the community. That for us is extremely important. So that's okay. why we now want to working on a voting system. So DCBs, people who have decided to become a donor to the community, uh, Digipad Foundation can vote on activities within the community. And there's, there's one important thing is, is we do not have members, we have donors. As a foundation, we cannot have members because members are like, like unions. We're not a union. We can sure. only have donors. And we give our donors the right to vote. So that's your way to involve uh, in the discussion. Uh, so as, as a donor, you have a, an opportunity to volunteer ideas, to uh, endorse or uh, support certain projects and activities. And of course, the most important thing, as a community member, you yeah. can be involved within the digital community. And people who are, are watching this and think, you know, what can I do to become involved? Well, just look at our Telegram uh, groups. Uh, yeah. We have different Telegram groups for, de for developers, for people who want to, to invest in it, for miners, for uh, translation of websites, for different uh, interests. And uh, the Digibyte Forum and the Digibyte uh, Wiki is a great starting point that gives you an overview of all the, the, the links and all the, the things you would like to know about Digibyte and also about the Digibyte Foundation. But again, the Digibyte Foundation is purely to empower the community. And I am only a voice of that community, right. hence we speak about we. Interesting. So for those of you that follow my YouTube channel, you know what my last question is going to be. Hans doesn't know what it's going to be. But it's a simple question. I always ask the person that I'm interviewing, I always give them the last say, the last um, comment to make. So Hans, if there's anything that maybe you wanted to cover that I neglected to ask you, or if you wanted to say something, again, you could answer it any way you want. If you wanted to talk to the Digibyte community, or if you wanted to make a comment or two, and you could do any or all of these. If you wanted to comment about someone that were like, hey, um, I, I don't know anything about cryptocurrency, but this Hans guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. So if you, again, we're not rushed for time. If, if there's any or all of those, if you just want to pick some and I'll give you the last word. That's, that's, that's great. That's awesome, man, John. I really appreciate that. One of the things I actually omitted or forgot to, to mention what we do as the Digibyte Foundation and I, I personally, but also Rudy and Rutger find extremely important is, is, is two things, advocacy and thought leadership. Let me start with, with one, advocacy. It's still, much as we think that you know, the, 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 the Bitcoin is more, is more than 10 years old, Digibyte is more than seven, almost eight years old. It's, we're still green feet. We're still very early days within the blockchain community and within the crypto world. So that still means we need to cover a lot of barriers and still need to build a lot of bridges. And we call that advocacy. So as the Digibyte Foundation, we find it extremely important that we are empowered to be an advocate uh, in that space. And if you agree with that uh, and you feel you would like to emphasize a certain aspect on advocacy, please join us in the community and join that debate. Secondly, thought leadership. And, and that also, again, strikes very personal and, and, uh, and almost in, in the core of who I am. I wholeheartedly believe that decentralization is something that is, is, is way beyond what we can see in, in, in our financial system. Social reform, civocracy, political change, decentralization. If anything, we are shouting for decentralization. We just don't know the word yet. Yeah. The community at large in the world, there's so much division politically, socially, economically, financially, um, education, healthcare. There's so much division, and all we want is 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 control 
over our own, own lives, self-determination, yeah. empowerment. And, and therefore, it is extremely important for us that we um, develop that, that decentralization component much more and more, and also beyond blockchain and blockchain technology. So we want to be a thought leader, uh, a global thought leader to agendize specifically that, and that goes very well with, with advocacy. So mm. if I, you know, as, as, as something to, to ponder about or to contemplate, you know, we like to think about, okay, are we, uh, you know, when Binance, when this, when that, are we going to the moon, or, you know, the, the discuss. Yes, yes, I, 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 I get it. It is important, John. Yes, I, I get it. I look at it. But we also need to look beyond, and there's so much more we can unlock with, with, with blockchain technology and with decentralization. And this is also a perfect time to, 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 to plant that seed with a lot of people. So for me, becoming a global thought leader and working on advocacy is something that I can absolutely be wholeheartedly passionate about. Wow. Well, this is a good interview for people that are looking in, watching, going, you know, maybe you see like, you know, um, and I'm exaggerating to make a point. That's what we say in the United States. You know, maybe you think the Digibyte Foundation, you know, aren't, aren't run by real people. They're run by robots and people don't care. This is one of the reasons that I have the YouTube channel is to give people really a name and a face to look at, to look at Hans and go, wow, this dude's serious. Like, you know, he's, again, putting his money where his mouth is. He's serious. He's, you know, him and Rudy started up the Digibyte Foundation. So don't think that, you know, all of these crypto projects that you're reading about or trying to invest in, that there's not at the end of the day, when you read the white paper, go to their website, that there's not real people that wake up in the morning, you know, some are married, some are not, you know, some have struggles, some don't. There, It's just, we're all real people trying to get involved in cryptos for a million reasons. So Hans, again, I've got another friend in the crypto space. I appreciate your your honesty and your passion. And um, yeah, tell Rudy that we said hi and we'll definitely have you back on. Absolutely. Again, John, it was our absolute pleasure to be here. And on behalf of Rutger the Treasurer, Rudy the Secretary, me the Chair, we absolutely love being here and giving the opportunity to talk Change Angel, uh, to talk Dispite Foundation, to talk decentralization. And absolutely, again, I, I, I really appreciate what you said is, yes, we have a face. We have, there, there is more to it than, and, and, and more than just a pretty face, uh, part yeah. of the expression. It's, sure. it's, we are really passionate and committed to help you the community to empower and uh, we are passionate about it we are relentless in that pursuit and we're just so happy and glad that you have given us the opportunity to talk a little bit about just that thanks very much no problem thanks again hans appreciate you guys